The Earth. Is it really just a big ball floating in space, spinning on its axis at 1000 miles per hour, hurtling around the sun at 67000 miles per hour, whizzing through the Milky Way at a milk curdling speed of over half a million miles per hour, and yop driving through the heaven at over half billion miles per hour? And what about the sun? Is it really 93 million miles away and close to a million miles in diameter with a circumference of nearly 3 million miles? and is constantly illuminating half of our entire earth's surface with the rotation of the earth creating a 24 hour days or night phase or shh the earth is flat and maybe it's completely still just like we experience and maybe the sun isn't big but is very small and very close and not illuminating the earth from 93 million miles but is illuminating locally and maybe everything the sun moon and stars are not far away but are circling overhead relatively close in this part we are going to explore the latter option and at the end we are going to reveal startling evidence through the use of time lapse photography that the sun cannot possibly be 93 million miles away but is in fact very close and is illuminating locally as it traverses our flat earth and now watch how the sun comes at you Boom. I mean, come on. And that's all perspective. If you look at contrails and chemtrails, Google images, you'll see them. They start out low at the horizon, they come up overhead. Look at that thing. They come up overhead and then they go down at the horizon. Perfectly explains what the sun would do. Here it is going overhead. I love time lapse. Look at this. You can't go out. Look at the sun. You can't see this stuff except that it's on, you know? Time lapse like this is incredible. Now watch this thing. It's sweeping. You know the sun over the flat earth is doing a big circle, all right? Look at this thing. See it sweeping to the right? You can see how the clouds are hanging down to the horizon. One shot up there. That's exactly how the sun would do on flat earth. Okay, back to the Copernican principle and this is what they tell us. The sun is 93 million miles away. Now I'm going to show you evidence through sunsets that shows the sunlight following the sun over the horizon and it shrinks as it goes over. Now there's no way it would do that if the sun is 93 million miles away. Okay, first I'm going to show you some footage from the International Space Station, which I call the International Fake Station. Okay, now watch this animation, watch this sunset. Now this is exactly if they came to me and said do an animation, this is how I would do it. if the sun were 93 million miles away just like that have the whole horizon fade evenly and that's not what we see okay wow look at that look how the light lifts off the ground like a big wedge or like lifting up a sheet of paper that's incredible footage definitely the lights following the sun right okay next i'm going to show you uh, how a sun that is circling over the earth that creates the horizontal aspect of the sun if you combine that with perspective which creates the up and down of the sun the rising and the setting you get the 23.5 degree tilt that they talk about it's nothing but perspective and a circling sun There's another sun sweeping at a big circle. A 
Okay, here's a phenomenon that you might be wondering. How the heck do you explain this on a flat earth? Well, this is footage taken from Alaska during the summer and the sun does look like it's going up and down. The reason it's doing that is that this town in Alaska is not in the center of the sun's circular circuit. In other words, the sun is making a big circle and the town is not in the center of that circle. So the sun will be closer and further from the view of the camera. That will cause it to go higher and lower and also maybe even bigger and smaller. Look at the high altitude airplane. Remember, this is from a high altitude balloon, so that airplane is probably at cruising altitude. Notice how it looks like it's going up from the horizon. That's exactly how the sun will rise. Because that plane is staying parallel to the ground. And now watch, it will go down to the other horizon, right? Again, perspective. That's how the sun will set. And forget the big ball. That's just uh, due to a GoPro camera. And then also, look at the size of the sun. Look at that thing. I mean, there's something to it to say that the higher up we are, our viewing sun looks bigger and it looks like it's not as high in the sky as it does when we're on the ground. Something to that. Let's explore this notion a bit further that the sun looks bigger when filmed from higher up. The next three slides I'm going to do a comparison of side by side the one on the left, the cameras above the clouds, the camera on the right is ground level. And the point from the side by side comparison from the ground level and the level above the clouds is that above the clouds we are only maybe a mile or so up. And if the sun appears to be closer to the camera, well, that means it's probably much closer because if the sun were 93 million miles away, a mile closer wouldn't make any difference at all to its visual appearance. Okay, here's a little illustrator or a little cartoon from a website called timeanddate.com. It's really funny that they would have a perfect illustration of a sun rising and setting on a flat earth due to perspective. You'll notice that it rises from below the horizon and sets below the horizon. Now you might be saying, well how is that possible? I can see now you're saying that it rises and lowers due to perspective, but how does it disappear below the horizon? 
Well, I got a theory about that. Because of the fact that all parallel lines and planes converge at your eye level horizon. This is according to perspective. I'm not making this up. If in fact and they do, they converge at your eye level horizon visually, then it makes sense that after that point they diverge, meaning they then separate so the sun would continue on a downward track. As you can see from my illustration here, the lines would go to your horizon and then afterwards they would spread out and separate, kind of like a starburst and the starburst being at your horizon, at your focal point. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to start talking about, now I'm going to start showing you the time lapse of the sunsets that I'm talking about, that clearly show the sun is close and illuminating locally. Here we go. Alright, here are a couple of time lapse sunsets. And just like the sun rises at the beginning of this video where you could see the sun coming at you, not maintaining any 93 million mile distance, here you can also see the sun moving away and it's clearly not due to the rotation of the earth and a sun that's maintaining a distance of 93 million miles but the sun is moving over the earth and moving away from you Okay, these next three slides, the sun is almost set already, behind the horizon. But watch as the sunlight shrinks and follows the sun. It's definitely a locally illuminating sun. Not far away, not very big, and definitely not 93 million miles away. Okay, remember this video from the beginning? In the video I showed you how the sun is circling over the earth and now watch it sweep to the right. Okay, now I want you to pay attention to the way the light follows the sun. The sunlight is going to shrink, right? As it follows the locally illuminating sun. Now watch this. See it shrinking following the sun? You do not get that if the sun is 93 million miles away. The entire horizon should fade evenly. Just like this supposed shot taken from space of the earth, you can clearly see the way they depict it. They depict the demarcation between day and night or light and dark as a long straight line. 
and you can see the long straight line moving as one solid piece. That means that the sunset should all fade, the entire horizon should fade evenly. But that's not what we observe as we will see and as we've seen in the footages so far. The sunlight shrinks and follows the sun over the horizon. So these time-lapse sunsets are definitely the nail in the coffin for heliocentrism. But this particular one here, shot from above the clouds from this observatory, is the final nail in the coffin. Look at how the sun just shrinks and the light shrinks to nothing. That cannot happen as I have showed you in the clip where the sun illuminates the entire earth from 93 million miles away. You don't get this isolated look at the sunlight trailing the sun. That's only possible with a small sun, close, not very high, illuminating locally. I mean, if this isn't proof to you, then you gotta take the blinders off. And finally, I'm going to show you some examples of local illumination for a city in the background. This is from Grand Canyon National Park. You can see Las Vegas is one of them. You can see the stars going down so you know that it's not the sun. That's the glow of Las Vegas. Since you can see that's local illumination, I'm just giving you an example by showing you that. There's Tuba City and a little bit of Flagstaff. Now in this one here, you see two lights. Obviously, we don't have two suns. But these are two cities lit up and it's just to show you it looks just like the sun going over the horizon. That's the point of me showing that. That's local illumination at work. The sun is not 93 million miles away. Because if it was, the entire horizon would fade evenly. And the entire horizon would fade at the same time. Not what we see here, which is a small sun cruising over the earth and the light is following it. Case closed. Don't waste any more time. Visit the links above now and order my book 16 Emergency Landings Proving Flat Earth. Visit my online store now and order the new enhanced Gleason's Flat Earth Map. This map used to be in every school and library in the nation before NASA was created in 1958, when the maps were ordered removed. Have your Gleason's Map hanging on the wall in your house, where no government can take it down. Here you see it hanging on a wall in the house of the late Charles K. Johnson. Here is a quote from the book 1984 by George Orwell. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Order your map now.